Greetings everyone, it is I, Brother Scott, bringing you another Daily Baptist Bread Devotional. Amen. And today is Sunday, August 25th, 2019. And today's topic is titled, All Things to All Men. Amen. And the verses are from 1 Corinthians 9.22b and Ephesians 3.9a. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, 1 Corinthians 9.22b says, And uh, I am made all things to all men, that I might be all, uh, means, uh, that I might by all means save some. So again, I am made all things to all men, that I might be all, or by all, excuse me, by all means save some. 1 Corinthians 9.22b. <clears throat> And then Ephesians 3, 9a says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Dot, dot, dot. Amen. All right. So, the author today is Tim Green. Amen. Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Time, Day Heights, Ohio. And he is the one that authors these devotionals and puts them together. So, <clears throat> let us jump into... The topic of all things to all men. <clears throat> Excuse me. Having a little throat problem there. All right. So he says here in a little novelette by Charles Dickens called The Chimes, there is a character that is in charge of ringing bells for certain occasions. For instance, <clears throat> and uh, really the thing that grasped my attention, he says, was the fact that the same bells that rang at a funeral were the same bells that rang at a wedding. Hmm. Yep. The same bells that were used to celebrate were rung to uh, commemorate. The same bells that rang a joyful sound were used to solemnly play a funeral dirige. Dirige. Uh, different circumstances determined the use of the bells. The great apostle was flexible and variable depending on the situation or the person being dealt with. And he says here, I don't think it wise to use the same tone or even the same Bible verses when dealing with a tattooed biker that you'd use uh, when co uh, common uh, communistrating <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's how you say that. Co yeah, commiserating uh, with the with an octogenarian lady. Some big words here on her deathbed. Okay, well, <clears throat> that's O C T O G E N A R I A N, octogenarian lady. I guess that's how you say that. All right, on her deathbed. So he continues here the same. Preacher can preach a sermon and comfort an entire congregation, or with the same Bible thunder out condemnation on sin and sinners alike. The difficult task at times is to make all see everyone gets uh, everyone gets some spiritual help or kind rebuke uh, all at the same time and with the same sermon. <clears throat> so again, let me read that here. To you, it says, the difficult task at times is to make all see. Everyone gets some spiritual help or kind rebuke all at the same time uh, and with the same sermon. Uh, and he says, hey, cut your preacher some slack. Yeah, <laughs> let's cut the preacher some slack. As used to be uh, said in the 60s. Uh, next time you hear him speak, he might be dealing with someone else. You're next. <laughs> So, the preacher is preaching the word, but it's not the preacher. He's just giving the word, but it's the Holy Spirit that convicts. It's the Holy Spirit that uh, that uh, convicts and reproves and rebukes and all that stuff. And so, when the preacher's preaching, he's preaching to everybody. And so, if you're having something in your life that needs to be fixed, well, the Holy Spirit is preaching to you in that specific uh thing that you need to get rid of or work on or come to him and 
admit that you need to get rid of that thing. Amen? So let us give the preacher some slack and give him a break and stop stop saying, Why are you preaching at me? It's not him. It's the Holy Spirit through him that's preaching at you because he's preaching out of God's word. And if something is not right in your life, well, it's going to be preached on <laughs> some way or another. So let us cut the preacher some slack and stop... Stop uh, stop giving him so much grief because he's just the messenger. Amen. He's just the one preaching the word. It's all God's word. It's not the preacher's opinion. He's preaching the word of God. Amen. So let us learn to give him some slack and say, Hey, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me something. So I need to listen and I need to get right and I need to repent of that thing and get right and admit that I am sinning in that way, and I need to get rebuked by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, next time you're trying to give the preacher a hard time, just remember, it's the preacher's just preaching the message, and if you're having something that you need to be dealt with, the Holy Spirit is going to get you, just like he's going to get me. If there's something not correct in my life, or I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, and the preacher starts preaching, and that topic or that thing gets preached on, well, that means that the Holy Spirit knows exactly what you're doing. God knows what you're doing. So, yeah, no, but not too much slack. <laughs> All right, brother. Amen. All right. So, yep. Amen. All right. So, let us uh, learn from this little uh, devotional. Praise the Lord. And that is the end of this devotional. All things to all men. Amen. All right. So, that being said, let us uh, learn that when we're being preached to, and the Holy Spirit's trying to get through to you in some way, it's God trying to get through to you. Amen. <laughs> yeah, spoken like a pastor. Amen, sister. <laughs> you should know he's your husband. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, that being said, let us get on to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we will be finishing up the chapter. So let us go into 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You're welcome. Glad you're all on here and watching this. And hope you're getting the help and the blessing from this. And nothing wrong with preaching the truth. Amen. And... If something needs to be dealt with in your life and the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, then you need to to repent of that. Amen? And uh, give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Alright, so let us go into 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we will be reading verses 20 through 40. Verses 20 through 40. <clears throat> Alright. So verse 20 says... Um, where are we at here? Did I just say, uh, yeah, chapter 7. All right. So, verse 20 says, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he is he was called. So that same calling is that we're all to go preach the word of God, not just certain people, but we're all called to be uh, preachers of the word and go out and tell people about Jesus. Amen. So let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Uh, care, uh, care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price, amen. Yeah, we're bought with a price. Uh, be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man, wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Hallelujah. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as <clears throat> one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Amen. So we should be faithful. I suppose, therefore that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a, for a man so to be. 
Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Hmm. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So he's saying here that uh, if you're not married, uh, you can uh, serve, the more, uh, serve the Lord more. So, and then we continue on. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is difference uh, also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attain upon the Lord without dist uh, distraction." Yeah, and not without distraction. But if any man think that uh, he be behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so uh, require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let him marry. Nevertheless, he that standeth uh, steadfast in his heart, having no uh, necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart, that he will keep his virgin doeth well. So then, so then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Amen. Yeah, that was uh, the end of chapter 7, talking about whether you're married or single, and talking about uh, different things with different uh, married people and stuff like that. So you can go and check that out and do some more research on that. <clears throat> Amen. So there you have it. That is the end of chapter 7. And whether you're married or single, if you're single, you uh, would have a better chance to serve in the Lord. Amen, brother. Well, have a good night. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> All right. So hope, hope uh, whatever you are, married or, or uh, single, if you're single, you, uh, just keep serving the Lord and living for Him. And if you're married and then you need to attend to you, the, your spouse. Amen. So, praise the Lord. And you guys can serve the Lord together if you're married. Not not saying you can't serve the Lord together. But uh, that that comes with, uh, with uh, living for Jesus. Amen. So, whether you're single or married, you can all live for the Lord either way. Amen. But, uh, he's just saying that uh, if you're married, you're going to attend to... To the things that are in the world, or of the world, how he may please his wife, or vice versa. Or, excuse me. So, that being said, I will wrap it up there. A little difficult stuff there. <laughs> Amen. So, you can go research that on your own time. Praise the Lord. Alright. Well, that will be all for tonight. And... Praise the Lord. We got through that. A little bit of preaching there. Amen. So, praise the Lord. All right, sister. Well, you and Brother Dan have a great 
rest of your night and hope to talk to you soon. Amen. Maybe one of these days I'll get up there and see y'all and be able to fellowship with y'all again. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up and we will back tomorrow sometime to uh, go on the topic of faith, love, and hope for tomorrow. So try to get up early in the morning to do this before I go to uh, public ministry at UCF. Uh, that's tomorrow. So uh, hope you'll pray for that. Amen. All right. Well, this is Brother Scott signing off for tonight. And you all have a great and wonderful, blessed rest of your evening. And if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, if you're watching and you have not been saved yet, today is that day of salvation. So boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Because today is the day you need to be saved. Amen. Because the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Amen. And uh, you cannot save yourself. Because it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Um, and so forth, Titus 3, 5. And Jesus has provided for your salvation. Uh, who, Jesus, has his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter 2, 24 so and then you must receive jesus for salvation and it says here believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved acts 6 16 31 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name john 1 12 that thou that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Romans 10, 9. <clears throat> and the last thing here is, Now is the time to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Behold, now is the accepted time. Not tomorrow, not a week from now, but now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Second Corinthians 6, 2. As the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hebrews 3, 7-8 So hope you'll trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Alright, well, I'm going to say goodnight, and see you all Lord willing tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.